Hello, and thanks for clicking on this video feature powered by America's Building Trades Unions, made up of more than two million of the most professional construction men and women the world has ever known. From coast to coast on jobs large and small, from hospitals to high rises and everything in between, our resume is on display no matter where you look. Included are large public works projects with extensive capital outlays, paid for by taxpayer funded bond construction measures. And for these types of jobs, no matter the location, it inevitably comes down to providing the most bang for the public's buck. While it's true, getting the best price is a contributing factor, exponential value for the dollar spent is proving to be even more important for cities and towns. Let's head to the California Bay Area. From the streets of San Francisco to the Valley of San Jose, bond construction has been going on for years here and almost exclusively at the core of the work are project tracking, efficiency and assurance measures known in the industry as project labor agreements. It's true for the San Francisco Unified School District and the San Jose Evergreen Community College District. Both entered into separate project labor agreements to renovate or improve their school system at all levels of learning. Bay Area Rapid Transit, better known as BART, also signed a PLA to bring public transportation out to Santa Clara, a measure long overdue. But the PLA also covers freeway work and HOV lane upgrades and the like. Just recently, fresh off one of the best seasons in recent history, the San Francisco 49ers made sure a PLA was in place before the construction begins on their new stadium. From professional sports to school construction to public transportation, in the Bay Area, one thing connects construction across these industries, project labor agreements. We have a project labor agreement that we signed off on with the Building Trades Council here in Santa Clara County for the college district. But you know, for us, it's part of a bigger collaborative relationship. There is no way in which an institution of education or governmental agency can put something before the voters without active demonstration that you have a whole community behind you. So at the very beginning then, of course, we received not only community support, but we had a very strong relationship already with the labor councils, and they just gave it everything they had. We do have a lot of non-union contractors that actually work under the PLA, um, but because there are certain guidelines, there is a uniformity to the way that if there's a problem, we are able to handle it as opposed to, you know, everybody going in different directions. And we have folks who work for the school district in maintenance, and they tell us that prior to the PLA kicking in, when you had a lot of projects with uh, heavier non-union participation, bottom feeder contractors and so on, uh, that you, uh, you, they were going back in afterwards and doing a lot of fixes on the work and that that's gone way down since the PLA uh, kicked in. The importance of BART being, uh, being under a project labor agreement, a PLA, is that it will ensure that the project is going to be done correctly with the highest skilled workers and it's also going to get done on time and under budget. Because uh, a project like that, it's a $900 million project. We can't afford for, uh, for an investment of public dollars like that to be done uh, with mistakes. When it comes to um, uh, the PLA agreement, uh, they have been established here in Silicon Valley for a very long time. Um, Six billion dollars uh, already has been spent uh, with PLA agreements, and there just hasn't been any problems. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to say that we're, you know, pro-union, uh, that we work very closely with the building trades, but it isn't just because of the politics of it, it's because they're very good working partners. And we include in our project labor agreements a career component, so that students that are going through elementary, middle, high school, and community colleges get exposed to the construction industry in math and science. They go to our training programs, we provide internships, we place them in an apprenticeships. We write that right into the agreement. Not only are we going to create new classrooms for you, we're going to create opportunity for your students. Our department of career tech ed serves uh, 26 different academies and seven different themes. Architecture, construction, engineering is one of those. Within that we have two engineering academies, a trades, a skilled trades pathway, an architecture pathway, and two other extended learning uh, programs. Uh, those students need those work-based learning opportunities to really succeed and tie that learning back to the real world and give them relevance as to what they're learning. Those opportunities would not be available 
uh, if we didn't have this PLA and these partners on board supporting our students. We have partnered on the uh, Construction Careers Academy. We're working with the trades. We've been able to do training for construction management jobs. We've done internships. And together we've been able to leverage a lot of grant money to kind of help the program and help workers and, and help people get good careers. With the internships, we've had several interns and that's a great success story because they had uh, preconceived notions of what labor unions were all about. They came here, worked with us, uh, shadowed some of the reps, went out on the job site and found out what we're all about. We actually brought them into our apprenticeship program, let them see what we do in the school. Uh, they got an idea of what we do out in the field. We don't have, in the construction industry, seniority. We don't have bumping rights. We don't have paid personal days. We don't have even sick days or vacation days. If you go to work today and you do a good job, you get to come back tomorrow. If you don't do a good job tomorrow, you're not coming back the next day. The employer determines who works and who doesn't. Silicon Valley has given us a wonderful forefront of innovation and technology and the ability to come up with the training centers, not just for hands-on, but also how to conduct yourself in front of a customer, how to be at your best all day long. And more importantly, if ever we see something that needs a little bit of tuning up, we, uh, we go about things in a professional, appropriate way to help our members be the very best they can. We made believers out of people who uh, thought that we cost more. And uh, they thought that PLAs would limit the contractor's presence and limit the number of bidders. Where in fact, we see more bidders coming in. And it's been a real blessing during these uh, difficult years. We've had opportunities to put our members to work. A lot of this is bond money. And this is the local community's tax dollars funding a library, a school, a fire station, a police station, you name it. Empirical data shows us that in the case of San Jose's municipal buildings, 1,510 local jobs were created. $1.9 million in local tax revenue was generated. And $164 million in economic activity was created. We'll do you one even better than that, a true apples to apples comparison. Recently, two library jobs were done in the Silicon Valley, one with local workers and prevailing wages paid, and one without. The one without in Palo Alto had less than 12% of the taxpayer money going to local workers, compared to more than 71% from the Gilroy Library just across town. I think people have a responsibility to keep their local tax dollars through construction in the local community so it circulates and, and creates a bigger bang for their buck. Um, it's not just about having a new fire station. We want to put people in the community on that fire station at work. They shouldn't have to drive by that fire station unemployed while somebody from the Central Valley or some other state is working on that fire station. It's not acceptable to us and it shouldn't be acceptable to the general public. We are um, trusted by the, uh, by the taxpayers to make sure that their dollars are going to be spent uh, very wisely and PLAs are a tool that cities, our city has used, and I think all cities across this nation could use uh, to make sure that projects are done right, on time, and under budget. But many times when these types of projects are being debated, the building trade's main competitor, the Associated Builders and Contractors, argue against PLAs, despite this data and these facts. Up and down the state in California, and perhaps even nationally, there's been this, this notion that it is uh, that, that it limits somehow our ability, well, let me place it as a governing board, to manage those funds or myself as a chancellor or president to do the best because somehow this constrains us. Our experience just proved differently. We were able, because we weren't dealing with having to interact with a variety of folks but had a streamlined process through the PLA and the Labor Council to, to do several things. Access skilled workers, immediately in a broad array of fields. Secondly, we never abrogated in the PLA, and I don't believe any PLA does that, our ability to control the bidding process. So we're still in the process where we, uh, where we review, we put our own RFAs, RFQs, uh, we uh, establish the guidelines for ranking and rating, we make the selection, we pick the best value for the money, and, uh, and or we could reject our bidders. Once you get past the bluster of the ABC and others who say, oh, the sky is going to fall, and once they experience that not only the sky doesn't fall, but exactly what they said was going to happen didn't happen, and everything we said was going to happen happened, they no longer listen to the ABC. Not only do they choose not to listen, but they choose the value proposition of today's building trades unions in line with their motto, value on display every day.
I think that's a great slogan, uh, value on display every day. And you can read a, a lot into it. And certainly, there's great value to, to workers in society of, of paying a, a living wage uh, to people. First, I mean, that's got to be one of your values as a public official and what we're trying to do as a society. But also, we know that we're going to get good value out of the workers. I think San Francisco Unified definitely uh, is a great place to showcase value on display every day um, for the building trades because it's having students in these workplaces, raising the morale, working with the employers, in addition to, you know, value for the community. It's matriculating down throughout the communities which employers are, are hosting these students and working with students in our city. So without question, today's story proves the following. PLAs are not discriminatory against workers or contractors. Non-union workers and companies have chosen to participate in these jobs in the Bay Area. And at the same time, local taxpayers themselves are insured access first and foremost. Secondly, Project labor agreements are not more expensive, in fact just the opposite, and the customer remains in control in terms of whom they choose to complete the work. And finally, the extra benefits of PLAs can and do include things like internship opportunities, shadow programs, and introductions to careers in the trades. Seems like a win-win-win all around. It's a new day for union construction where the best choice money can buy because we live where we work and we're concerned members of the community with an extraordinary skill set unmatched by our competition. Value on display every day. Thanks for your time.